नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग अस्सलाम वालेकुम सस्रियाकाल सो इट्स अ वेरी ब्राइट आफ्टरनून एवरीवन एंड आई फील इमेंसली प्राउड इन अनाउंसिंग आवर वेबिनार सीरीज बातचीत दिस सीरीज हैज बीन लॉन्च्ड टू इंटरव्यू पीपल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट वॉक्स ऑफ लाइफ एंड टू शेयर देयर सक्सेस स्टोरीज विद आवर स्टूडेंट्स gone are the days or i should say gone our days where when we used to think that after clearing 12th that's what we are going to do in our career now it is the time when the child is in its infancy or i should say the child is in grade 5 or 6 the child starts deciding about himself or herself to which walk of life one has to enter so we have launched this series to interview people from different walks of life and to share their success stories with our students it also intends to give them a wider insight of various professions that can be taken up as their career prospects basically we want to widen the horizons of our kids in this technology driven 21st century world it is very important to give our generation such exposure where they can think on multidisciplinary stage the new education policy which we are seeing nowadays that also aims at making our young learners future ready keeping this in mind let's first watch a video and then we'll discuss further so let's watch the video yes uh, i would request uh, the technical support team to share the video of the ants which we have decided please share that video ma'am that has been already run you have played the video yes ma'am okay right right so basically i wanted to share with you the video of one ants which i don't know why it has not been shared but i personally believe that we have to learn from ants a lot ants are the greatest architecture who can build huge underground metropolis full of interconnected chambers and galleries or skyscraping moons that have their own inbuilt air conditioning fantastic work fantabulous work is done by the ants architecture you know the first field which we are going to discuss today is the architecture it's a field that's a mix of conceptual creativity and pleasure in creating real structure so in contrast to the ants here i am talking to the i should say the most evolved person mr hafiz contractor Mr Hafiz is clearly India's best known architect he has been the biggest force behind changing the skyline of Mumbai and Pune and has emerged first map name in modern indian architecture born in mumbai and studied at boys town coding school nasik he completed his architectural studies from the academy of architecture in mumbai and graduated from columbia university in new york in 1976-77 you know when i was a little girl i should say and sir was doing his graduation from such a great um, university he is the winner of over 75 national and international awards for excellence in contribution to architecture including cwab architect of the year 2006 to 2013 A plus D Hall of Fame for the Decade Award. 
He was also awarded the Padma Bhushan in January 2016 by the government of India. He's the architect behind the three tallest building in India, the 42 in Kolkata and the twin towers of the Imperial in Mumbai. Let's have a glimpse of the work which he has done. You know, before we talk about a person and we start interacting with that, it is better that we should admire the kind of work has been done by the pioneer. Please share the work of sir. You know, the awe factor which these images have created, to be very honest, they are creating the aha factor in my mind that what the spectacular work being done by, I should say, the God's most beautiful creation has created the beautiful created work so that, you know, uh, everyone keeps on admiring the beauty of this kind of work. The Michael Enulo also said, the pain will go, but the beauty will remain. So the kind of effort which he has put has been amazing. And this beauty would be admired over the period of time till we are alive, we will be seeing it and we will be keeping on admiring his work. So here I would like to quote, great buildings that move the spirit have always been rare. In every case, they are unique, poetic, products of the heart because the creativity is the work of the heart, head, heart and hand, unless they all are together, some masterpiece can't be created. So with this, I welcome Mr. Hafiz to this series and, look, and I look forward to your insightful thoughts, sir. So welcome to Manthan School, the webinar arranged by the Thank you for having me here. Uh, and uh, listening to you, I'm reminded of my principal in, in school. Uh, uh, the way you are talking, I'm reminded of him. So uh, I think, in, and I, I can tell you that I loved my principal, Mr. Bajan Desai. And that should be, you know, a, one of the biggest compliments that I can give to anybody, you know that I know. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, you know, sir, the series we have started because, you know, the senior students which we have, I really want them to have first-hand experience. I really want them to understand that how from one adverse condition, one can be into that stature that life, uh, they can understand life in a better way. So let's start this discussion. So let's start with your background, your schooling, your interests and early struggle days, which I believe, you know, uh, that everyone has when we are learning. So struggling face is always there. So put some light on that, sir, please. Okay, I'll start with my school days. Uh, I was in a boarding school uh, because being only uh, uh, just one child. Uh, my father had died before I was born, so uh, finally, being a very naughty child, I was put in a boarding school. And 
uh, initial years, yes, I was a good student, but after fourth or fifth, I was not at all a good student, whole day play and things like that. But there was one thing which, you know, uh, I never knew that what I was doing was like designing or something like that. So I used to design cars, I used to design forts, guns, and I used to keep on drawing in all my books. And one day, uh, it was an English uh, class and my teacher, Mrs. Gupta, she was a Parsi lady married to uh, Mr. Gupta. So she was very, very angry on me and she started beating me with her ruler. At that time, we used to get fantastic beatings, you know. Uh, yeah. and, uh, uh, and, I, and I thought there was nothing wrong in that. Uh, and I used to get beatings, you know, if I don't get it every week, I would think that there's something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> so she beat me up and she said that, oh, you are a useless student. Uh, you don't know anything, this, that, that. Uh, but then she said, but remember one thing, that when you grow up, uh, become an architect. So I didn't know what the hell architect was or anything, but at least with that, she left me and I was happy. And as time would pass, uh, as I said, that I was never a good student. So uh, whole day play sports and all of that, and what you call it in Hindi, Danga Masti, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how my life was. And so at, when I was in SSE, uh, my principal called me and said that all these years I have taken care of you. Now everything is in your hand. And I taken care of you thinking and I had faith and I still have faith that when the occasion arises, you will rise to the occasion. And please show me that now you will rise to the occasion. So at that SSC level, I started studying right from fifth standard. I did not go to a single day for any uh, sports or anything and studied, studied, studied and finally got uh, some 45 or 48% uh, of marks and with 2% of NCC, I got 50% marks. Now with that, uh, uh, I wanted to be an architect and so I went to get my forms from uh, and at that time there were only two uh, colleges but at that time I knew only one that was uh, JJ College of Architecture and they would, won't even give me the form they said oh the minimum percentage is 80 percent so you can't get the form so I was going to join the army because I was uh, very much interested in army. I was a very good NCC student then. Uh, but uh, I applied to Khadak Vasla and my letter came that I should come there. Uh, and my aunt tore off that letter and did not tell me. Mm -hmm. And I came to know after a few days that my aunt has torn off my letter. So I asked her and she says, oh, you are the only son of my brother. Uh, I won't okay. like you. So then I wanted to join the uh, police force. Okay. Now, as, as it would have it that uh, I was learning French from my cousin's wife. My cousin uh, is an architect. So uh, I one day I was I had gone after the college. I joined uh, Jaihin because my mother said that become a graduate and then join the police force. Hmm. So one day nobody was there and one of the boys was architect was drawing a window detail. Now today we get all windows and doors, everything, you know, ready made. But when I saw that window detail, I said, uh, uh, I, he was a Gujarati. So I talked to him in Gujarati and said, Bari she, means he said, 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 so we had a bet and when my cousin came, I told him uh, that, uh, don't you think that this window won't open? So he says, yeah, whatever, you know, what you're saying is right. 
and then he said, but how do you know? I said, this has been my pastime. I have been just doing this. I have been drawing. So he says, okay, you draw it. So I drew it. And my abbreviations were different, but my detail was right. So he says, can you design a house with three bedrooms? So I designed it. Then he drew an exonometric from top. So I never knew the word exonometric, but I said, oh, this is from top. I can also draw it. So I drew it. So my cousins started telling me that leave everything, join architecture today. But I said, nobody is giving me admission. Forget admission. They are not even giving me the form. So I have another cousin of mine who is now in uh, uh, United States, a very successful architect. You can go on his website and see his houses. You know, he makes the best and the most expensive houses in whole of United States. His name is Wadia. Wadia and Associates, if you go on Google, you can find out. Okay, will do. So with his influence, I, uh, he knew the uh, uh, head of the Indian Institute and he gave me a letter. With that letter, I was allowed to enter the entrance exam and I got A plus in entrance exam. Now a student who is to fail virtually in all the subjects except uh, some three or four started standing first in architectural college and when they were doing I said, oh my god this is called this oh my god this is called that uh, and this is called sciography and this is called elevation and this is called plan and life became a completely a different thing I was very much interested in what I was doing and I really put in very hard work in fact I, I started work also in the same office. So I used to go to morning college and the whole day I used to work. And after five, five thirty, six, I would sit in the office, finish my work, catch the last bus, go home. That will be at 12 o'clock, go home. And that's how my whole life was. And finally, finally, uh, uh, in my final year, uh, I got out of uh, 200 marks, 196 in design, and I stood first class first all throughout, except for one year. So, and Great, sir. a big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Great achievement, so, sir. Thank you. And then I uh, uh, applied to Tata's uh, with Tata's scholarship, I went abroad and finish my uh, studies at Columbia University, which was also very, very uh, encouraging and extremely uh, tough uh, because the amount of work that they used to give. So, and this is how life started. So, right. tell me, if you want something else to know, I'll... I'll no, I'll sir, uh, I believe, you know, education system has changed drastically. I'm sure that then also teachers were a guiding force. And the way you said, you know, your teacher has shown trust in you and said, you know, be an architect. Now also the onus lies on a teacher only. You know, I have read in an interview where you have said that every morning a teacher used to write on the board, no work without hard work. And, you know, when you are saying on your own that you worked hard from the morning, taking the evening last bus. So I'm sure, you know, you put you must have put a lot of hard work and without hard work, no reward comes. So I also believe in and I want to say to my students, Samne ho manzil to rasta na modna. Jo man mein ho, wo khwab na todna. Har kadam pe milegi kamyabi tumhe. Bas sitare chune ke liye kabhi zameen na chhodna. So I would ask a question, another question to you, sir. In your opinion, how has the education system evolved from those days? See, uh, it is, I would say that uh, education uh, is something which keeps on evolving. And uh, as the time demands, uh, it will keep on evolving. But uh, everywhere we always think that uh, 
that our teachers, uh, when they are there, we don't value them. Uh, and when uh, we grow up and when they are not there, then we start valuing them. And as far as education is concerned, I feel that uh, each and every teacher of ours not only taught us what was there in the book, but it also taught us uh, how to learn from life. And when you are going to show that film on ants, I think, you know, we learn a lot. Architecture, at least I have learned a lot from nature. Uh, I remember once I had gone to one of my teachers when I was studying architecture and I said, sir, sir, that you haven't taught us this. So he said, no, there'll be so many things in life that I haven't taught you, but I have taught you the basic principle. Now it is for you to adopt that basic principle and all throughout your life you have to get yourself educated, educated and educated. And today also, every day we try and do something new uh, and adopt and try to solve a problem. And that is the biggest education. So education is not going to end with school or college or post graduation. The germ which has been put into you uh, that learn from the basics. And once you know the basics, then the world is in front of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, this year, CBSC also has declared its educational year as competency based education and uh, CBSC is emphasizing on uh, experiential learning last year this was the agenda and this year we are talking about competency-based education uh, recently we have also got a new education policy 2020 after 34 years so it is the beginning of a new era in Indian education history you know I believe that it will prepare our learners to face this competitive world and uh, CBSC always talks about, you know, life skills, development of literacy skills. And as Sir has also said, that every day is a new challenge. And we learn from the life skills which we have acquired and we become problem solvers. So I would here again ask another question to the Sir as, Sir, you have started your firm in 1982 with three people. And now you have a team of, I assume, 550 plus. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Technology is taking over in almost all the fields. As per you, what should these 21st century learners develop in themselves to sustain in this time? Uh, 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 you know, uh, when I started my practice, uh, there was nothing like technology. Let me be very frank. Uh, yes. We had not heard of any computers. The only technology was your pencil uh, and what was there in your mind. So I adopted technology much, much later. Uh, everybody used to say it. And, uh, and today I feel that technology without technology and adoption of every latest latest in technology you cannot be in the forefront because what uh, we can do uh, by hand and what a technology or a computer can do is completely different and much much superior so you have to learn uh, everything about technology and adopt it without that you will not be in the forefront so uh, and uh, it, uh, this is one subject that any amount of learning that you do in technology uh, uh, you are still not up to it and every day you have to learn something new something new so we cannot leave that uh, subject you know apart Yes, and uh, you know, I will say here, and I will add on to here the the speed by which these this technology is changing. So the knowledge which we are clicking just now, I will say it is at least twenty four hours stale 
right in every second there is new development which is happening and if i'm talking about you know qualities which are required by today's learners because my students are also watching this program and through this platform i really want to tell them to survive in this 21st century it is important and it is imperative that our students must acquire good communication skills social skills so that they should fit into the society and for fitting into the society it is also important that we should embrace technology because the kind of time which is going on corona time we can meet and we can chat we can socially fit with each other if we have embraced the technology well and moreover collaboration and leadership skills are very much important to survive and to sail and to lead in this world so uh, i will ask another question to sir and sir uh, you know these are the questions which uh, i want to assure you that you know my kids want to know from you because you are pioneer so another question you know when you were in college you used to tell your friends that your office will be running in three shifts and everybody used to laugh can you tell us how or what inspired you to be an architect part of the answer you have given you know your mother didn't want you know uh, that you should not go to police force but architect someone has uh, your cousin has asked you that you can uh, go ahead with that but a little bit more elaboration on this will help me see uh, what i feel uh, that first of all uh, i was very very lucky that uh, i joined a profession or i joined a college where i like doing that so when i used to be you know i was also saying that oh i will be the first guy who will make the 100 story building in india and uh, i uh, and in college also uh, when we used to present uh, our works the whole class would be given one classroom to display their works and i would be given another classroom only for my works to display them and i always had that and confidence that i will have more work because uh, uh, i i had that zest and i always wanted to solve a problem and uh, i i used to say that and today uh, with god's good grace 90% of the time uh, in my office we are literally working in three shifts and we work full nights people uh, uh, you know have their bath also in the office you know and so uh, uh, as you said it uh, that uh, very nice prog and which what i remember about my teacher mr tattu and in school he used to always come and write on the blackboard and he used to say son uh, no luck without hard work and i fully believe in that and uh, once you work hard i'm sure uh, nothing goes waste uh, a lot of times you know when some client comes to me and uh, he is not going to be paying so well i still take up his work because i feel that you know no work goes waste uh from something to something to something to something so rather than just sitting at home and whiling away my uh, your time i tell my kids also do whatever you have to do but don't waste your time uh that is one thing you will never get back so at the time of corona now uh, uh, everybody uh, was saying oh what is going to happen what is going to happen we started studying something and we came up with something completely new and we have started doing buildings much more economically now so previously in say uh, a lack of square feet we would make 100 flats today uh, in lack of square feet we are able to make 110 flats of the same size and much cheaper way yes so uh, so we are making 10% flats more uh, utilizing less amount of material and looking at today uh, the way our country is uh, with so much of population we have to house so much of population 
we are talking about environment today global warming uh, climate change these are the main things because uh, in the past everybody has utilized materials uh, without any consideration so today is the right time that we must think about materials we must think about resources uh, and use them very very judiciously so that we can leave uh, our future generations uh, in a right manner there is a very good saying uh, that we do not inherit the world from our uh, parents we have borrowed it from our children so when you leave this earth you must leave it in such a way that it is fit for the kids to take over not leave with so much of debt there are some people who are drunkard uh, not done anything uh, they leave a uh, debt for their kids we should not leave this earth uh, with debt we must leave it in a very very progressive manner that is what should be done what a beautiful thought sir you said you know we should not leave it uh, you know in the form of debt we should leave it in a progressive manner the way you have understood the societal need and the way you are talking about economically viable option is amazing you know if uh, our youth or our student understands the clear goal for the future and once a person decides and has visualized where one want to be in their life then the life starts creating path for oneself absolutely right. so here i would like to quote uh, dr apj abdul kalam also that you know you should uh, generally it is said you know one should dream big but he said dream is not what which you see while sleeping it is something that does not let you sleep but for achieving that dream it is important that one should have dream because if you have dream then you will work hard to achieve that dream and nature and the god and the kainat will start arranging path for you but your goal should be very clear in front of your eyes very good wonderful very sir i am really you know i'm getting goosebumps after talking to you um, ah. another question to you sir after completing your graduation from the us you decided to move back to india uh, wasn't it disappointing in terms of opportunity because generally nowadays when we see everyone wants to go uh, abroad so see, how come you decided to move back to india i i i am uh, i am a i really feel that uh, this is my country and uh, uh, i really feel that you know a lot of people uh if you leave your parents if you leave your country what is there in you so when i was i had gone for my visa uh to the american consulate when i wanted to go abroad so that count, counselor asked me oh you are never going to come back uh, so i said sir i know your country is a very beautiful country a fantastic country uh my country cannot stand any comparison to that but i love my country and i will come back and you know i graduated in the afternoon i caught a flight in the night at 12 o'clock because i knew that if i stay there for one day also america is such a fabulous country everything everything is there and everything is economical everything huh? i i knew that i'll never be able to come back so i came back yes mind you if i had settled there i would have done bigger projects much much more important maybe the world would have known me in a different manner but i do not regret anything that i came back i came back because i want to do something for my country and if everyone thinks that you know he wants to go up to uh, abroad and settle down what is the sense somebody which has given you everything brought you up when you had nothing it's like your mother if you do not look at your mother and parents her when they are old what is the sense 
so the same way uh, you cannot leave anything and you cannot leave your country you have to come back and improve your country do something for your country so that the country comes up and today our country is in a different ball game in the future uh, if today anybody is thinking that uh, you know he's going to go abroad and settle down he's making the biggest mistake india will be in a different world uh, in the next few years so forget that but even if it is not you have to come learn learn everything from everywhere the best of the university the best of it and then come and help your people positive outlook brings positive outcome and i'm sure you know the way you are thinking if our young generation start thinking like you then the problem of brain drain which we are facing will come to an end definitely and the idea of atmanirbhar bharat as coined by the honorable prime minister uh, prime minister narendra modi will come true uh, so sir uh, what will you suggest to our young generation who aspire to settle abroad what do I you suggest say, no go abroad go all over the world learn 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 and then come back and adopt yourself and do something nice for your country and that is the future and that is see finally you will make a lot of money you will do this you will do that but finally at the end of your life have you done something uh, which you are really proud of and which you are happy that is what is finally going to come and if you feel that oh you helped this you done this you done this done this and that is what is really needed madam will you just excuse me for a minute i just want to yeah. go around the please yeah it's okay sir perfectly fine uh, so here you know it is very important what our motherland has given us it is important that with the time when we grow when we develop ourselves we should give back to our motherland the emotional the emotions which are available in india we talk about emotional quotient nowadays right the love which we have the attachment which we have with the people is very important the emotional need is catered on daily basis in india i love the systematic chaos of my country i love my country i want to remain here i want to die in every single bit of this country i become a teacher and of this teacher because of the support which i get from the environment and now after sitting on this chair i really believe that what we have got from the society it is the time when we should start distributing when we start sharing the knowledge and when we start showing the right path to our loved ones the bachchas who are growing you know they are more aware of us they are more aware than the anyone who is available because they have embraced technology in a different manner but it is the requirement and the need of the r that our kids should learn the flips by flips i mean that there should be flexibility in every child they should be resilient they should have the agility by l i mean that they should acquire the leadership qualities by i we mean they should be innovative by p i mean productive and by s i mean they should be socially adjustable so it is important that each and every student of manthan school must acquire flips right so here now it is the time i think we should take few questions uh, from the audience side so we will be uh, talking about uh, taking few questions now over to the questions so there is one question from the youtube uh, side from mr sanjeet sanjeet alavat right and he is asking as the kids are spending more and more time on screen or maybe on mobile laptop 
TV how to divert their interest in art and drawing, drawing which they think is time consuming. <clears throat> See, I don't think uh, if a kid is spending time on mobile and computer, and if he is spending time in the right manner and uh, reading or doing something which is going to help him and he's learning something uh, and that is what he likes doing it and is progressing then i don't think there is anything wrong if the kid doesn't want to spend time on computer or on his mobile and wants to draw uh, and that's how he feels happy then let him draw but if he's drawing and achieving something let him do that if he's on the computer and learning something let him do that but to force him but if he's just watching some movies on computer and wasting his time but in and another thing if he's watching movies also and he's watching the right kind of a movie uh, uh, and learning something from it, then that is also not bad. If you're learning, but if you're just watching some movie, you know, where they are just shaking their backside and things like that and wasting time, uh, then I would be bothered. So if you're utilizing your time in the right manner and going forward, I think there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. And uh, I, I always say uh, to a lot of people that, you know, somebody says, oh, uh, I want to become a doctor or somebody says, I want to become this. I said, whatever you want to become, if you uh, become the best, uh, you want to be a barber, huh? but it's better to be the world's best barber than to be a lousy doctor or lousy, you know, architect or anything. So excel yourself, excel yourself. And that is what, what you should do. And now anyhow, you know, we have to, uh, being parents also or being adults, it is the time when we need to understand that gone are the days when kids used to work as per the parent. Nowadays, I should say, and I'll use the term here, maybe parents will not like it. You know, parents are the biggest interferers in their life. Why I'm calling them as interferers? Because now a child is an enlightened one. He knows his journey or her journey, and they are well aware of their career, which they have to pursue after five, six, eight years. So being parents, we should not force our dreams onto them. We should provide them the variety. It is the time when we have to arrange a platter for them. We should have, we should give them the opportunity to explore every single thing. And only then the child should be able to select. You know, when we were kids, our parents used to purchase a dress for us. And we used to wear that. Never questioned our parents. But now we as parents are taking them to the malls, taking them to an option. Okay, you select, then why not their career for which, you know, they will be spending their life. So if they will pursue their dreams, if they will be happy in carrying out that profession, which gives them the pleasure, then the job will not be a burden on them. So Absolutely. let them follow. Let them Absolutely. follow their dreams. And uh, sir has rightly said that, and I totally agree with him. So another question from one of our students who is in grade seven and is listening to your program. Uh, it's a different question. And I'm surprised, you know, a, such a young child can ask a student from grade seven, Samaira, who is asking, what is the estimated timeline for any project which you complete? And do you stay involved during the construction process also? A different question. Yeah. No, no. But, but I'm surprised that, you know, grade seven student is asking a question of this level. It's amazing. And we should encourage that. Please, yes, sir. yes. See, uh, there are different, different types of projects. And uh, uh, I, for one, do not uh, uh, refuse 
uh, projects which are, you know, at a time we feel that, oh, this is not a good project. I always, you know, I always feel that as an architect, uh, yes, it is my profession, but I'm supposed to be serving the people. I'm working for the people. I'm not working for glorification of my image. So when any kind of a job comes, huh, and at the time when the job comes, I feel, oh my God, what is this person talking? But when you apply your mind, huh, huh, it becomes a much, much better project. So first of all, different projects take different kind of a time. And some projects get finished in one year. Some projects, you know, when you do an interior, gets finished in two months, three months. Okay. Huh? And some projects take 10 years, 12 years, and they still go on. But in my office, what I do, huh, I do only design. That is, you know, I, you know, uh, when the job comes to us, uh, I, uh, in fact, uh, my way of working is that when the client is talking to me, uh, I start looking at him, I understand him, I understand his requirement, I understand his finance, and I start designing and show him, you know, what, how one should do. And 90% of the time, uh, I get an approval from the client that this is what he wants. And if he says that he doesn't want this, then I say, oh, then what, what doesn't suit you? And then I draw another sketch and show it to him. And I concentrate on that, the creativity. And then I have her, uh, my associates, then I tell my associate, okay, now come on, develop this and come to me. So I give him, say, a few hours, he develops it and comes to me. Uh, so then I again say, okay, okay, okay. I think the concept is right. Go ahead and do it. Or then I say, concept is not right. Again, I take it back. So what I have done, since I have around about 600 people and we have at any given time more than a thousand jobs going on, okay, uh, and uh, in a day, I must be working on at least 10 to 15 projects at any given time. So every hour I'm jumping from one project to another, but I only take care of design. And I follow with my guys what they are doing as far as design is concerned. I don't, don't write a single letter. Uh, I don't do any billing. I don't take care of, you know, whether money has come, not come. All of that is taken care of by other people. Uh, I only take care of my work, that is design. And I follow her, how the design has been followed on the site. As soon as my associate has a problem, and he says, sir, you know, there's a problem on a site. And I say, okay, come on, let's go on the site. And then I go on the site. Otherwise, uh, the work is designated. Uh, the most important thing is the design has to come about and it is to come about in the right manner. And that I take care of. So that's how we are able to do more work. Uh, and uh, I'm not the best guy in writing letters. I'm not the best guy in doing billing. I'm not the best guy in negotiating fees. I'm not the, I'm only good at my work. So I do that. One has to be like Arjun. One can be Arjun, one can be Eklavya, who can, you know, be a great uh, person without even, uh, you know, just having the picture of the teacher in front of a person. But, uh, sir, I would like to admire you, uh, you know, a person from YouTube, Poonam Sharma, who is working in Cyber City and is amazed with your design and infrastructure which you have created for them. So a big uh, applause is coming for you. Uh, you. Your program is being watched uh, in U.S. also, sir. And there is a question from the U.S. Uh, uh -huh. Shalika Arora is asking uh, that if we have a child who has interest in architecture, how we guide our kids as a parent? See, uh, 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 I must say uh, architecture is a very, very different kind of a profession. Uh, a lot of kids come to me 
and say that, oh, he wants to be an architect. So then I make them understand what architecture is all about. And I often say that architecture is one of the most easiest profession. And the other side is architecture is one of the most difficult profession. OK, it's whether you are cowed out for it. There was a time uh, when I used to be teaching in a college. And uh, a lot of time when I was teaching in a college, I was teaching in some second year or third year. Uh, and I used to see the uh, students and I was taking the subject of design. And when I used to sit with my guys and the, and the student would look at me and say, sir, how to design? Now, there is something like, you know, if somebody is telling me that how can I imagine? I can't teach a person how to imagine. I can't teach a person uh, what he should aspire. I can tell him, uh, I can teach him construction. I can teach him materials. I can't, but I can't teach him uh, that somebody says, oh, I want this. And if he cannot imagine that, and if he's not got the flair for that, then how will he become an architect? So then second thing is, the most important thing is, that today uh, you are a teacher, uh, whatever poems, whatever essays and all that, you write and convey to another person. So for us, the writing is the drawing. So if he cannot draw uh, and somebody has told him, oh, you will make a lot of money in architecture and all that, and he wants to join architecture, then I said, please don't join. Uh, so when I was teaching and when I saw that this student doesn't have that flair, I was telling him, for God's sake, leave architecture, do something else. And I thought that I was giving him a very good advice. So just to think uh, and a parent's telling that, oh, become an architect or do something. But if the kid does not have the flair for drawing, he doesn't have the flair for imagination. Uh, he cannot, you know, imagine how, you know, sometimes the kid plays now with a car and he says, you know, and another car came and it bashed. That is imagination. Uh, but some kids, you know, take a book and read. Uh, he, he, it's not that something is bad, but he's not cowed out for that. And, and I am not cowed out for to become a lawyer or to become a, a, a professor. So there are, it's, it's, you are made for certain things and uh, other subjects or other professions, you can study and become that. But here, yes, there are subjects where you can study, but there is something the most important design. You should have that flair and then you will be taught. But if you don't have the flair, please don't send your kid to architecture. Today, technology is there to help you to draw. But still, uh, you are not going to be sitting in front of a client and doing in a computer. You take a paper and draw in front of him and give him a solution. That's the best thing that can come about. You have also answered the question which uh, another person from Facebook, Ashok uh, Harshwadhan Goyal, has asked that what is uh, your message for students to become leader and how can they develop leadership skill? Partially you have answered. Uh, but I will say here, as Sir has said, you know, attitude can be developed, can be acquired, but basic aptitude has to be present in a person to acquire that attitude. So allow your kids to follow their passion, they will come to know or you will come to know about their aptitude over a period of time. Parenting is a journey. On day one, when the child has born, it's not as being parent our duty to decide what my child will be after 17 or 18 years. Allow that space. Give them the options and let them decide. So a wonderful session, uh, sir. I, I learned a lot from you. But uh, being a teacher, you know, it's my habit to share a story. So I will, before concluding, I'll share a story with everyone. Very uh, good. Ek tha, chota wow. sa, aur, uh, jab bhi kabhi Eid hoti thi, 
तो उसके मम्मी डैडी उसको लेकर जाते थे कि अब आज आपकी अचकन सिलवाएंगे राइट ये चांदनी चौक के एरिया की बात है तो वो बच्चा जब जाता था अचकन सिलवाई जाती थी उसके बाद जो दर्जी उनकी शर्ट सिलते थे अचकन सिलते थे वॉट ही यूज टू डू ही यूज टू सलाम राइट द चाइल्ड ग्रू एंड जब बड़ा हो गया देन ऑल्सो एट द टाइम ऑफ ईद द चाइल्ड वुड बी गोइंग टू द सेम टेलर and the tailor also grew old over the period of time but then also he used to salam him so that child who has become an adult now asked him once you know i feel embarrassed that you are so old and when i wear that achkan and i look good and i look myself in the mirror you still do me salam then he disclosed the tailor disclosed he said you know it's not you whom i salam i salam to my creativity that yes again this time i have made a perfect piece which is fitting to you as per my expectation so today's session sir it's my heartfelt salam to you the things which you have created they are really amazing and every person whosoever is using it and they will be using when we will be going they will keep on admiring your work so i would like to give my vote of thanks to you sir thank you hafiz sir for your words of wisdom and i'm sure that it would be a new insight for our viewers i'm sure that a question will be lingering in my students mind that who can take this as a career architect is great for individual who enjoy serving a diverse array of issues using creative and systematic problem solving approach to come to an aesthetic and functional answers once again sir thank you for creating numerous incredible designs for holding a modernistic approach to sustainability having a vision for the future building materials and designs concerns regarding the future cities and the right approach to design them but before i conclude i would like to tell my uh, you know viewers over here uh, one can apply to hafiz sir office for internship because it is the time when students start planning about their career and in when they are in grade 9 10 uh, at times they can go for 10 days internship and even you know when you are carrying out your graduation the meanwhile some period need to be spent at some a uh, place where you actually learn the functioning of an office so now we should start planning the exam is being conducted at sir's office and the people who are selected you know they have to be equipped with certain skills only then they are allowed to work over there and moreover uh, some stipend is also given from the sir's side so a great work sir is doing for the society and we must encourage our students to look up to him uh, a heartfelt thanks a big salam to the creativity aur ek chhota sa message mere bachchon ke liye jab hausla bada bana liya unchi udan ka jab hausla bana liya unchi udan ka fir dekhna fizool hai kad aasman ka so sky is not the limit we you have to you know crack that sky also and you have to be amazing with strong will and determination nothing is difficult to achieve and when we have people like hafiz sir in india who are showing us the direction who are the examples who are of this caliber and we can always look up to him for advices nothing is difficult for the young month nights thank you very much everyone for viewing the program thank you sir I, yes sir i must say that i wish uh, you should be teaching on uh, you know this kind of platforms because the way you are teaching i think it's a great encouragement for any student and i, I must compliment that you are a fantastic teacher and i, I take wish... it as a compliment and when it is coming from your side i will say and that you have I, made I, my day sir really i sincerely believe in Uh, each and every word that i have said and i am saying that you have made you know, my day I, i think i think your school is very very lucky to have you thank you very much ma'am thank you very much allah hafiz khuda